So for real, we are back with Senator Bernie Sanders. He's joining us from his home in Vermont. Bernie, can you hear me? How you doing at home? What's this, this feeling like for you, this crazy isolation we're all living through? Well, it is totally crazy what the, it's, um, you know, not being able to uh, touch my grandchildren not be able to get into the office, uh, kind of trapped in the house it is very difficult to me, but it's difficult to everybody in this country and most of the people around the world. Just to give you an example, I just heard literally two minutes ago that somebody who was working on my campaign, was terribly ill, was taken to the hospital, was on a ventilator, near death. Good news is she's out right now and she's healthy. On the other hand, somebody who was involved in the campaign passed away uh, just a couple of days ago. So. It is, I, I think we all have to take a deep breath and appreciate we are living in an unprecedented moment in American history. Whoop, you've never been through this. I've never been through this. No. Nobody alive Nobody. has been through this. So, you know, we got to think our way out of it. Main thing we have to do is not panic. We have to love each other. We have to be concerned about each other and get through this thing together. Uh, but it is an unprecedented moment. Senator, and this is. We have this to worry. Is, this Senator, this is Sarah, and I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry for your update on, on the people you've watched. Um, a lot of people are scared right now, and I think much of that is due to the misinformation that's floating out there, and a fair amount of that has come from the White House. What's the number one thing that keeps you up at night right now? Uh, number one thing, uh, clearly, I think, that Trump from the very beginning uh downplayed the threat of this virus the idea that today we have doctors and nurses all over this country who do not have masks that cost 50 cents or a dollar a piece is unbelievable we don't have enough ventilators gloves gowns that speaks to a dysfunctional healthcare care system uh, but right now we have to listen to the scientists uh, we have to maintain our social distancing uh, we need the world to cooperate, to move as aggressively as we can, to come up with a vaccine, to come up with any kind of treatment that we can. So there has to be international cooperation uh, in terms of coming up with the uh, health care solutions that we need. Uh, the other thing that I stay up night worrying about is that as we speak, there are people who are watching this program right now who have no food in the cupboard, and they are worried about how they're going to feed their kids. So in an unprecedented way, we're going to have to make sure that nobody in America goes hungry. That means we get food out to everybody. Uh, the second thing I think we have got to do is that while the last um, uh, bill that we passed, the stimulus bill, will help a lot of people, we have to make sure that those provisions get implemented as quickly as possible. So we're talking about $1,200 per adult. 500 bucks per kid, that's a start, not enough, but we got to get that money out right away. Uh, and we also have to get the unemployment checks out right away. I want everybody to know that what we have done is extend and expand unemployment in an unprecedented way. That means the average unemployment check in America is about $360 a week. For a four-month period, we've added $600 a week on top of that. Furthermore, we have expanded unemployment to cover millions of people who previously were not covered. And what people have got to do, and we're working with the Department of Labor now, to get the word out, if you are an Uber driver, if you are a part-time worker, if previously you were not eligible for unemployment, you are eligible right now. Learn how. Go to your state unemployment office. And we're trying to do our best to make sure that state unemployment offices have the resources they need to be able to tell people what they are entitled to. Uh, furthermore, I think we Senator, need... Uh, yes. S Senator yep. Sanders, this is Sunny. Um, you, you say that the coronavirus crisis proves that our for-profit health care system is a failure. Can you explain why your Medicare for All plan would work better in this kind of scenario? But right now, there is 
for two reasons. Number one, there is growing anxiety in this country uh, that people are increasingly unable to afford health care or that they may not have any health care at all. Right now, before the epidemic, uh, we were looking at 87 million people who were uninsured or underinsured. And now, when millions of people are losing their jobs, they're losing their health care. What do they do? We have the absurd situation that the recent stimulus bill covered you for the cost of the uh, testing that you may need for the coronavirus. It did not cover the treatment. So you've lost your job. You may not have any income. And now you're worried about health care. What Medicare for all does is not a radical idea. It does what every other major country on earth does. It guarantees health care to all of our people not tied to employment. You lose your job, you got coverage. You're a small business person, you got coverage. No deductibles, no copayments. Second point about the dysfunctionality of the current system. How does it happen? I want everybody to think about this. We are spending twice as much per person as any other people on earth for health care. And yet, we don't, we don't have enough ventilators. Our doctors don't have enough masks or gloves or gowns. That doesn't sound like a strong public health system, the likes of which we should have. Go, Senator, Sarah. Uh, this is Sarah. Just to, just to push back on that a little bit, countries with universal health care routinely have to wait longer and sometimes die before receiving many of the medical treatments. Right now, if you can't afford it, to wait because Corona isn't, uh, they're, they're having this, it, it, it's not something you can wait on health care for. So what would your counter be to why that would be beneficial right now? Well, Sarah, I mean, the truth is that there are long waiting lines before Corona virus. Uh, there were long waiting lines uh, in the for uh, people who need health care. Uh, the truth is that uh, in our country, uh, there are, for many, in many, many instances, other countries for normal procedures get health care a lot more rapidly than we do in this country. We have areas of America right now, in rural areas, for example, where you don't have the kind of doctors we should, where hospitals are being closed down. We are paying far more for prescription drugs than are the people in any other country, in some cases, 10 times more because we don't negotiate prices for prescription drugs. So I don't accept the basic premise uh, of your argument. I think the truth is that in Canada and other countries around the world, their healthcare systems are far more popular than our system is because the function of our system, to be honest, is to make billions of dollars in profits for the insurance companies and the drug companies, not to provide quality care to all people. Sonny, go ahead. Senator. Senator, um, some are accusing you of using the pandemic to push uh, Medicare for all. And um, they're saying, you know, at a time, at this time, we should put politics aside and, and come together uh, behind the president. Uh, what is your response to politicizing well, this allegation that uh, everyone is politicizing? Well, I don't this? know who is making the allegation. You know, I have political opponents who make all kinds of accusations. but. Should we put politics aside and all come together? Of course we should. And when we all come together, it seems to me we have to do several things. One of them is guarantee health care to all people right now. The absurdity that you may be diagnosed with the coronavirus and you go into the hospital and you spend thousands of dollars getting treated and maybe, God willing, you come out alive, well, you got a huge bill out there. If you're being diagnosed with cancer right now, the truth is that we have 500,000 people a year who go bankrupt because of medically related bills. So let us come together. You're absolutely right. But in coming together, we got to do a couple of things. And one thing to say that, especially in this crisis, people should not have to worry about the cost of health care. They should not have to worry about whether they can afford prescription drugs or not. They should not have to worry whether the pharmaceutical industry is going to make billions of dollars by creating a vaccine that will be unaffordable to ordinary people. It must be free to all. So let's come together on that premise. Very good. So more with Senator Bernie Sanders when we come back. We're back with Senator Bernie Sanders. 
Uh, Senator Sanders, I just, I have to ask you this question now because I've been watching to see what you were going to do. Uh, and I'm told that you intend to stay in this race uh, for president because you believe there is a path to victory. I want to know what that path is because this feels a little bit like it did when you didn't come out when uh, Hillary Clinton was clearly well, the person folks were going for. So can you explain why you're still in the race yeah, well, and what this not, path is that well, you I, see? I, 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 well, one of the reasons, well, that's not quite accurate, I worked as hard as I could to, uh, for Hillary Clinton. But the reason, there is a, uh, a, well, a, but I, a path Bernie, for just, just so we're clear, you, you worked for Hillary, but it took you a very, very long time to, to, to hop in. And your people also, it took a very long time for them yeah, to uh, hop in. So right. Whoopi, I, when I say that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, I, I don't accept that characterization. But the point is, okay. people have a right. Why are you still in the democracy. race? People have a right. Last I heard, people in a democracy have a right to vote. And they have a right to vote for the agenda that they think can work for America, especially in this very, very difficult moment. We are assessing our campaign, as a matter of fact, where we want to go forward. But people in a democracy mm -hmm. do have a right to vote. And right now, in this unprecedented moment in American history, I think we need to have a very serious discussion about how we go forward. And one of the things that I am working on with other members of the Senate and Congress is a new stimulus package, which not only makes sure that all of our people in this crisis have health care, but also that they continue to receive their paycheck. We have got to understand where we are at. And right now is April 1st. It is likely possible there are millions of people who cannot pay their rent, cannot pay their mortgage. Yes. Can't but wouldn't it be smarter for you to continue happens, on that path run, to make sure that gets done? Well, we are As doing it. Believe me, I am time. doing it. Our nature of our... I'm sitting in my house right now. I'm not holding a rally in Wisconsin because of the nature of campaigns. But right now, what I am primarily focusing on with other members of the Congress, is a new corona, what we call a coronavirus four stimulus package, which will guarantee that every worker in America continues to receive his or her paycheck, that states and cities get the kind of revenue they need to take, maintain their payroll and take care of the work that they have got to do. What I am very worried about so is plan that is people to stay cannot in, afford yes. to, uh, you know, your plan I just is to stay. said that we are assessing. Well, for the fourth time, you're assessing. We it. are assessing. Okay, all right. We are assessing. Uh, very our good, Sarah. You want to? You have a question, Senator? Oh, oh. Yeah, I want to keep it just for a second on the election still. For a while, you were the front runner and people had um, essentially written off a Biden candidacy. But then it took a turn on Super Tuesday. And why do you think you underperformed that day? You had mentioned uh, that, that a lot of the numbers show that the younger voters who are much of your base didn't really come out. Why do you think that is? Well, I could tell you, you know, why that is. And I think the main reason is that several of my opponents uh, kind of dropped out right before Super Tuesday. Uh, but if it's okay with you, my focus right now and what I think the focus of America has got to be is how we deal with the incredible, unprecedented crisis we are now experiencing. And the point that I'm making is if we don't make sure that people are going to have the money they need to pay their rent, to pay their student loans, to pay their credit cards, loans to make, pay their mortgages, you're not only going to have personal crises by the million, but if people are not paying their loans, the banking system is going to have a problem. So I would hope that everybody understands that we have got to look to the future in a very different way than we have looked before, and that Congress is going to have to act in a way that we have never seen. Most importantly, in my view, we have got to do what other countries around the world are doing, what the UK is doing, what Norway is doing. And by the way, what we did in the last stimulus package, you may or may not know this, but as a result of that package, over 2 million workers in the airline industry, most of whom are not working right now, they're at home, 
they are continuing to receive a paycheck. And that is what we should be doing, in my view, for every worker in America. Workers need to have the ease of mind to know that they still have their jobs, even if they're not at work, they still have their paycheck. Will that be expensive? It will. But I think that is the most significant path uh, forward. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just to, just to clarify, I, I totally understand that the the emphasis needs to be on the times we're in. I think so many people are trying to look down the road on more systematic changes in the election that can hopefully bring some of these visions forward, which is why we're asking a bit about that. Yeah, well, and I'm indicating this is exactly so what I believe in. I think we need to have that kind of discussion. We have got to be thinking about the future in a very different way than we thought about the past because the moment is so very different. And what I want everybody in this country to understand is that we have a government that cares about them. Whether you're middle class, whether you're working class, whether you are homeless today, our job now is to make sure that every American says that in this terrible pandemic, you know what, we're gonna have the economic resources to buy the food, to pay the rent, to pay our student debt. That's what we've got to do. Sun we are not there yet. Sonny, go ahead. I would hope that in a bipartisan way, Sen the Congress can act uh, effectively. And, and Senator, you know, Does getting back to uh, coronavirus, the pandemic, uh, President Trump has said many times that no one uh, could have seen the coronavirus coming. But in my view, we know that intelligence reports from January and February warned of a possible pandemic. Uh, why do you think these warnings were ignored? Was he hoping that it would just go away? And, and why at this point, you know, do we not have our medical professionals who are on the front lines not equipped uh, with PPE to fight this pandemic? Well, you're asking a very I don't want to go off on Donald Trump. I think I would hope that everybody in America uh, understands that I believe that he is the most dangerous president uh, in the modern history of this country, a narcissist, uh, somebody who thinks he knows something when often he doesn't know anything. And the fact that he downplayed uh, the nature of this pandemic from the very beginning, don't worry, it's all going to be over by April. We only have a few cases. Instead of rallying the American people, instead of rallying the scientific community, instead of educating the American people, about the need for social distancing and the other things that we have to do. I think his inaction has cost the lives of many, many Americans. So that's yesterday. Senator, but today, what we have got to do... I wanted, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, no. I don't want to cut you off. I just wanted to ask you, um, because I know we're running out of time, the country looked so different six months ago. Do you have any idea what the country will look like in a little over six months when we vote the next president in? Well, the answer is, I wish I did, but nobody does. I mean, one of the scary parts about this, this is not like a tornado where you have destruction, oh, we got to rebuild the community. We don't know how long this pandemic is going to last. What we do believe to be the case, according to economists, is that tens of millions of Americans can lose their jobs, and we can have unemployment as high as 25 or 30 percent. That is why, and the main point that I want to make this morning, is that Congress has got to act and act decisively to make sure that every American understands that they will be protected economically, that they're going to have the health care that they need, that we're going to use the Defense Production Act, which Trump has not utilized, to make sure that we have the equipment in our hospitals and our doctor's offices, where there are their masks, their gowns, their gloves, their ventilators, the ICU units that we need. We're going to be able to do that. But this requires an unprecedented effort in a bipartisan way from the United States Congress. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Thank you, Senator Sanders.